Today we'll be discussing an article by Stefano Cressi called A Decade of Social Bot Detection. And presenting this article is Alea, Angelica, Gareth, and myself, Willem. As social media has become ever more prevalent in our lives, so have social bots. These can be both useful and malicious. Due to the negligible cost of creating and managing social bots, they are easily utilizable in situations such as information warfare, artificially inflating the popularity of public characters, and manipulating opinions. An example of spreading misinformation would be the 2016 US election in which Donald Trump won. We now know that a minority of social bots, automated social media accounts mimicking humans, played a central role in spreading divisive messages and disinformation, possibly contributing towards Trump's victory. Events such as the 2016 election have triggered a multitude of efforts for detecting and removing bots. This article discusses social bots and the effect they have on society, the way in which current detection systems for social bots are becoming ineffective, and the need for proactive detection methods to reduce the number of malicious social bots without removing useful bots or even legitimate accounts. We will finish by discussing the challenges facing the future of malicious social bot detection and the idea on how best to move forward. I will now pass on to Alea. Hi, my name is Angela. Now we are going to discuss about the diverse definition of social bots as described in the article. Nowadays, there are many definitions of what social bots are because each definition focuses on different characteristics. Many people are interested in social bots, but each one of them in a different perspective. For example, computer scientists and engineers are more interested in the technical perspective, while social scientists are focusing on the political implications of their use. A social bot is an agent that communicates more or less autonomously on social media, often with the task of influencing the discussion and generally the opinion of its readers. Now we are going to discuss about the average presence of bots and their role. The social bots are used for many reasons and can be characterized either benign or malicious. The malicious ones try to appear as human operated and their main purpose is to manipulate opinions. It is worth mentioning that the average presence of bots was estimated to be in the region of 15% of all active Twitter accounts in 2017 and 11% of all Facebook accounts in 2019. So their goal is to participate in online discussions like cryptocurrency discussions in political activity and in many worldwide events. But nowadays, a huge worldwide effort is taking place in order to stop this social bot pandemic. In other words, new studies on the characterization and detection are published at an impressive rate. And if this trend continues, there will be more than one paper published per day in the future. So in the next slide, we can see the publications per year on the characterization and impact estimation of social bots. So, in this figure, we can see that in 20-year period, the publication have noticeably increased in three bibliographic online databases. A milestone in the graph is that in 2010, the first work of social bot detection was addressed. Now we are going to discuss the differences between early and most recent approaches to social bot detection as described in the article. In the small circles we can see the possible bots account, while in A and B we can see the supervised detectors. In the blue color we can see the old bots for both groups. In the pink color we can see the evolved bots, while the rest of them are human. Actually, in the early approaches, a supervised detector is separately applied to each account under investigation, while in the second 
group in the most recent approaches. It is applied to a group of accounts looking for traces of synchronized behaviors. Here in the yellow colors we can see the accounts labeled as bots but unfortunately prediction errors can still happen because small groups of coordinated bots might provide insufficient information for detecting them. In this slide, we will analyze the characteristics of the newer bots versus the older bots. Cressy developed a set of uh, supervised machine learning classifiers for detecting the fake followers. They are commonly used to boost the popularity of the public cartels that buy them, and they can be bought for as low as $12. Then the botometer came up, which actually evaluates possible bots based on their profile characteristics, the social network structure, and the contact that they produce. Cressy was focusing on a specific type of bots, while Botometer represents a general purpose bot detector. Unfortunately, this generality leads to a reduced bot detection accuracy. Also, newer bots often feature advanced characteristics that make them much more difficult to detect with respect to the older ones. In addition to that, these early approaches have several drawbacks. For example, humans have been proven to fail at spotting bots, and in a recent experiment, only 24% bots were correctly labeled by humans. The issue of bot evolution. Bot evolution is the vicious cycle of creating smarter bot detectors, leading to the creation of smarter bots, which again leads to the creation of smarter bot detectors, and so on. The first wave of bots until around 2011 was simple. The bots had few friends and didn't post much except to directly accomplish their goals, often by spamming. However, bots did not stay the same. Chaoyang et al. produced works showing the existence of a second wave of bots. These new bots were more believable and better connected. To detect the second wave of bots, Chaoyang et al. also produced a supervised learning classifier. This is an example of machine learning where data in the dataset is labelled so that there is a learning goal. As it is a classifier, it classifies the data as something, e.g a bot or not a bot. Unfortunately, then came the third wave. From 2016 onwards, studies noticed the third wave of bots, and Chaoyang's classifier no longer worked on this wave. This demonstrates bot evolution, as the classifier created in response to the second wave of bots has itself been superseded. If we look at the numbers, only 5% of newer bots are removed from social platforms compared with 60% of older ones. Tech-savvy people tested on identifying social bots could only tell apart newer bots and real users 24% of the time. The same users spotted older bots 91% of the time there. This means that we can no longer clearly separate bots from legitimate accounts. Thankfully, bot evolution continued and this new wave of harder to distinguish bots led to the rise of group approaches. So, what is a group approach? As can be seen in this diagram, on the left we have the individual approach where the bot detector looks at each individual account and decides whether it is a bot. On the right, you can see the group approach, where it looks at a large group of accounts and then tries to detect if they're bots by looking for things like collusion. These two graphs both show the number of new bot detectors over time. The top one shows the steady rise of the group detector. The bottom one shows how machine learning has risen, with the rise of unsupervised and adversarial approaches particularly significant for group approaches. Now let's look at the techniques used for group approaches. With graph-based techniques, coordinated and synchronized behaviors appear as near-fully connected communities in graphs. Graph-based techniques can be used to analyze users interacting with content and other users. For example, how they share comments and following other users. Similar results can be achieved with adjacency matrices and spectral subspaces. Unsupervised group approaches are about looking for unusual patterns in things like tweeting and retweeting. This can be done by computing the distance metrics from an account's time series and subsequently clustering accounts by those distances. This works because real people are more varied in their posting. Although there has been a big rise in group approaches, one problem with them is specialization. 
People specialising in different fields of computer science, research and group approaches tend to publish in their own field. This means that some combinations of approaches are less common. For example, text-based detectors that perform unsupervised group analyses are almost unexplored. Hi, I'm Angelika. What we've done so far is we've highlighted the individual to group approaches in bot evolution. Next up is the part of the article which talks about the future of deception detection. As has been mentioned in the article, both the individual and group approaches follow a reactive schema, meaning the improvements are only made after bot mischiefs are discovered. This gives the bots the benefit of the long lifespan that it takes us to develop those techniques meaning scholars and OSN developers are always a step behind. And despite the increasing techniques, the bots don't seem to decrease online. The second observation within the article talks about how machine learning algorithms are usually based upon neurality and stationarity assumptions, which social bots are not. Neurality is violated because social bots are actively trying to fool detectors, they are not neutral. And the stationarity is violated because bots don't show the same characteristics over time. This means that the same algorithms we've been relying on for the last decade will not necessarily pr prove useful for future bots. One development which the article talks about deeply is the use of adversarial machine learning. This is because all tasks related to online deception, automation and manipulation are intrinsically adversarial. The goal of adversarial machine learning is to study vulnerabilities of the existing systems and the possible ways of exploiting them, and this in turn can produce more robust detection systems. And this vision has been implemented by generating and experimenting with adversarial examples, which are those which are made to induce errors within the detection systems. So what we do is we either use those existing adversarial examples or we come up with them ourselves for possible bots that could exist in the future, which in effect causes us to be more proactive instead of reactive, mitigating the previously mentioned observation. These adversarial networks are further improved by the use of the latest development in AI, which is the generative adversarial network. The generator network here creates many adversarial examples, while the discriminator network differentiates between malicious and legitimate examples. One notable example presented by the article has been used for the downstream detectors using GANs. GANs have not been used for social bot detection yet, but the article presents us with really good points for how and why it should be used. And this is based on the fact that it has been used for the use of differentiating between fake, fake news and so for the bots it can also be applied. And the main point given here is that GANs can be applied more generally for the use of bots. Therefore, despite the challenges encountered, we are strongly motivated by the promising results, as also testified by the adversarial approaches. Open challenges include organizing this whole body of work, making benchmarks, but also profusely analyzing the tools existing right now and comparing them. As you can see in the diagram here, what we're doing is evaluating those detectors based on favorable conditions, but what we should be doing is using more generalized conditions. An important factor to consider is bot detector generalizability, which is using a bot detector for bots that have not been originally considered. The most sophisticated bot deception techniques are deepfakes, which are becoming increasingly difficult to differentiate from each other, but also from legitimate accounts. And this is why we need to coordinate this inauthentic behavior. And here we are at the end of our presentation. The four factors that we need to consider with the bot detection going forwards are, first, we need to focus on identifying suspicious coordination independently of the nature of individual accounts. Second, we need to avoid providing binary labels in favor of fuzzier or multifaceted indicators. Third, we need to favor unsupervised or semi-supervised approaches over completely supervised ones. And fourth, we need to account for adversaries by design. Thank you very much for listening.